My name is Maureen Newton, M-A-U-R-E-E-N, N-E-W-T-O-N, and I'm the department chair for sociology and social work at Jacksonville State University. From Knoxville originally? Yes, born and raised. So I think it goes without saying that you're a, a lifelong ball fan. Lifelong Lady Ball fan and still have season tickets since 1987. So what was it like kind of being uh, on Rocky Top and being a part of those years of what, watching the Lady Balls become the Lady Balls? It was probably more than we could have expected, except we did expect it. She just um, demanded excellence from day one. I went and saw her uh, coach when I was in third or fourth grade, the alumni gym, which was an old gym on campus at that time. And I told my mom, that's what I want to do when I grow up. I want to I want to play college basketball. And it was because of Pat Summit and the Lady Balls. Where'd you end up playing? I ended up playing at UAB, and uh, one of the primary reasons I went was because they played the Lady Balls my freshman year. And uh, it was a blast going back to Knoxville, playing against the Lady Balls in front of a semi-home crowd for me. What was, I mean, talk about just being on pads. I mean, this is probably back in the days when they played at Stokely, right? It was at Stokely, yes. So talk a little bit about, yeah, what was it like just kind of stepping on that, that hollowed ground back then? Well, it was amazing. Pat was such a pioneer for women's basketball. She even allowed high school teams to play at Stokely to try to promote girls' basketball in high school. So the first time I got to play actually a game was in high school. And um, other than going to her camps, which I went to every year. And that was amazing to me. The uh, unfortunate thing was, whenever she was around, whether she came to one of my high school games or the game at Stokely, I tended to play my worst because I was so nervous. Um, but the time that we played at Stokely in college as a freshman, I had a good game and we actually gave them a tough run that night. My um, high school basketball manager became manager for the Lady Vols. And so she told me at halftime that she really let them have it because we were only down by three at halftime. I mean, all the players for you know Pat, they they talk about they could feel her stare on the court. They knew that you know she was looking at them without even looking at her. They knew you know that intensity was always on the court. Being an opposing player, could you maybe get that aura as you're as you're out there and as you're performing throughout the game? Absolutely. Pat stares has been known for years. When I was in camp in high school. Uh, I was in a dorm with one of my teammates and uh, we were kind of acting silly looking out the window of the dorm room and we heard a knock on the door and we opened the door and it was, uh, it was Pat Summit and she just said, ladies, don't you think it's time to get ready for bed? And we said, yes ma'am. And that's exactly what we did. We went straight to bed. And that was in the late 70s, so she was intense from day one. What about, you know, t talk about how you've continued that relationship with her. And to, to continue knowing mm -hmm. her. Well, she, uh, I have her, uh, the stare on my screensaver in my desktop at my, in, on my office um, because it, it just was so meaningful to so many uh, to see how passionate she was about what she was doing. Um, going to the Lady Ball games, my mom was the biggest, is the biggest Lady Ball fan there ever was. And so we would, um, uh, have birthday cakes with Lady Ball things on them and uh, you could even have a cake delivered to your seat during a Lady Ball game. Um, I got to go to um, a fundraiser at uh, Coach Summit's house in 2009 uh, where I um, got to spend some time with her, my mom got to spend some time with her and we even got to spend some time with, with Coach Summit's mom at that time and it, she just, any time you could just spend a minute around her you wanted to do it. Um. How so? I mean, really, the span of your your knowledge of her is about what almost forty years or about. Yes, yes. I mean, that's a that's a remarkable time. I mean, there's some of her players that yes. haven't even known her that long, or you know, I mean, right? That, that's something that talk about just the idea of Pat. Has she has she always just been kind of that intense figure that we see on the court, or does she have a, a side away from the court that we don't really get a glimpse at? Oh yeah, she definitely has a side away from the court. Uh, the day they had the fundraiser at her house, she had her two dogs out with her, and she was throwing the tennis ball in the pool, and they were jumping off the diving board and fetching the tennis ball. So she worked hard, and she played hard both. And, um, you know, it was... Uh, 
she just, when I think about uh, where I am today and what women's basketball has done for me, it's been amazing. Uh, I'm currently the faculty athletic representative here at Jacksonville State University. I got to work at the Final Four in Nashville when they had it there a couple of years. And all of these things are because I saw Coach Summit and the Lady Vols play in the like, late 1970s and said, I want to do that. You know, you just kind of touched on a little bit about the impact for women's athletics. I mean, do you think that that's something that Pat Summit will be known for more than just 1,100 wins? Absolutely. Or do you, think that, you know, being hired right after Title IX and just what she was able to do for women's sports and women's athletics as a whole. What, I mean, what do you think will be the more lasting legacy, or is it both? Class. She is class with a capital C, and I think that's what she'll be remembered for. Um, her her memory will live, you know, long and active in everyone's life, I think, to try to work towards uh, making an impact, not necessarily as large as she did, but in some way making an impact. Starting as a head coach at age 22, I can't imagine as Division I. Uh, coach at that time with very little pay, um, very little support, and never giving up and sticking with it to become the best in the country is just amazing. Well, and I saw a, a letter today that's uh, been kind of sealed, and it was the letter that was sent to her asking her to become the head coach at Tennessee. Yeah. And I mean, it's kind of gives you chills almost to think, you know, what life might have been like had that not ever occurred, you know? Yeah. I mean, to think she started at, I think, UT Martin was where mm -hmm. she was coaching before. Uh, do you think that she will forever be known as possibly one of the greatest Tennesseans ever? One of the greatest Tennesseans ever, no doubt about it, and probably one of the greatest coaches ever in women's or men's sports. Um, she, you know, when you talk about being a pioneer, um, that's what she was, and she just helped to bring awareness to uh, women's sports in general, not just women's basketball. When you heard the news, uh, I mean, that, that picture that you just showed me, that was back in 2009, mm -hmm. two years before her diagnosis or reporting right. her diagnosis, but, you know, what was your reaction to hearing about what had taken place? It's devastating. It's devastating. I was telling a friend today, I said, you know, about 10 years ago, I was thinking, okay, she's got this many wins now. If she coaches for another 20 years, no way is anybody ever going to catch her and the number of wins she's going to get. And then two years later, you know, she is diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. And I'm just thinking, I can't believe this is happening. I mean, there's no doubt that I mean, if she didn't have this, that she would still be coaching today, would you? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I cannot imagine her retiring before age 65. Um, hard to ask, but, you know, when you heard the news, at least, at least I think there, a lot of people were expecting this because there were the reports right. saying that her death was near and that the pastor was saying that, you know, the families are saying that her condition is really gone and so worse. But, it still had to have been hard to hear the news this morning that she had passed. It is. She actually came to some Lady Ball games this year, and so to hear that she's had such a sudden a downturn was, you know, uh, just it just breaks your heart. It just breaks your heart. Um, but you know that's not the way she wanted to be known, or the way that she would wanted to have lived. But I can't say it's a blessing for me that she's gone. When. Being an administrator, working in a university setting, you know, you probably encounter a lot of a lot of people at you know times in their lives when there's a lot of different routes they can kind of go down. Pat Summit, her success rate with her her student athletes and that they had a hundred percent graduation rate, is that something that you maybe try to take some of the some of the pillars that she kind of built her foundation on and maybe pass it on to other students and other student athletes that you encounter? Well, that's my hope and we try to tell student athletes that a college degree is something that you earn and then what you have it, it can never be taken away. A torn ACL cannot take away your degree, a concussion cannot take away your degree and so it's always a part of you it's something that will help you for the rest of your life and it's an accomplishment that you can look back on and be proud of and you know the sheer fact that she got all those wins as people would say the right way yes that's got to speak volumes to the kind of person that she was you know as a, as a mentor i would imagine 
role model. Um, you know, she did it the way that everybody wants to be able to do it. Uh, it's not easy to do it that way, but it gives you something to look for uh, as far as having a goal and trying to achieve that goal. Is it any surprise to see the response that we're seeing to Pat's death and that I mean, we have the President of the United States, we have you know, people from all walks of life saying, you know, their, their condolences and, and recognizing just who we lost here. It's not just the state of Tennessee. It's not just the University of Tennessee. It's it's bigger than, than all. That's that's what brings tears to my eyes is seeing how recognized she is for the things that she's accomplished and uh, the love of her teammates, the love of her family and friends, and just the world at large knows what an important figure she's been. What's next for for Ball Nation? Um, you know, we, we've lost someone that's truly near and dear to us. You know, what, where do we go from here? I think it, it's only going to motivate them to work even harder to make her proud. So I have no doubt about the future for Lady Vol Sports and UT Sports in general.